Hello folks, welcome back to the SFOM channel and thanks for tuning in. In this particular video we're going to discuss what's in the night sky for the month of July and that actually rhymes. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So there's some pretty exciting stuff going on in the night sky for the month of July. And uh, as always, I will start with discussing near earth objects. And um, actually there are three comments right now in the night sky, which you might be able to catch and image. So that's pretty exciting already. Uh, next, I will talk about the positions of the planets. And actually uh, that's also pretty exciting because both Jupiter and Saturn are in opposition in the month of July. So this provides you with the best opportunity uh, to capture and look at those planets and third of all we are going to talk about deep sky objects that you can image in the night sky for the month of July and actually of course July uh, is a very good opportunity to capture a lot of beautiful nebulae that are located in our very own Milky Way and uh, yeah last but certainly not least uh, I will discuss uh, the pictures you shared with me using my hashtag NSSPO so night sky astro forum on Instagram and I saw that you already shared over 100 pictures so really thank you so much for sharing all of your hard work uh, with me and uh, of course we're going to look at some awesome pictures that were shared in the month of June so uh, thank you very much for sharing those pictures thank you very much for subscribing to my channel and without further ado let's get into those near earth objects so there are actually two exciting new comets to look out for in the northern hemisphere. The first one is named Common Lemon C2019U6. And currently this comet is very close to the sun in the constellation Hydra. And uh, the observed magnitude at the time of this video is pretty good. It's 6.4. And uh, yeah, right now it's at about 125 kilometers distance from Earth. And it will become visible in the Northern Hemisphere during the second half of the month of July. And uh, if you want to uh, look or catch this comet, just look towards the west just after sunset and this comet will be visible in the constellation Virgo and during the last month of July this comet will slowly move towards the constellation Boothis or Boothis I don't know and uh, yeah if the observed magnitude stays like this so 6.4 6.5 uh, you are perfectly able to capture this comet uh, using only a small telescope or a small refractor and you can even catch them using your binoculars so that's pretty awesome so the second comet to look out for in the northern hemisphere is comet Neowise C2020 F3. And uh, yeah, the observed magnitude of this comet is pretty good as well. It's 6.8 at the time of this video. And uh, it will be at its closest distance from Earth on the 23rd of July, uh, where it will be about 103 million kilometers away. Um, this comet will become visible during the second half of July. Just look towards the northwest, uh, where Comet Neowise will be visible in the lower part of the constellation Ursa Major. And if the observed magnitude stays like this, so 6.8, uh, you only need a small telescope or some binoculars to actually uh, catch this interesting comet. So I'm happy to report that also for the Southern Hemisphere we have an exciting comet in July which is Comet Enke 2P. And actually this is a periodic comet and it means that uh, yeah, Comet Enke it uh, orbits the Sun once every 3.3 years. And uh, right now its estimated magnitude is 7.5. But just look out for the 7th of July. Because on the 7th of July this comet will reach its closest distance from Earth. Uh, at just about 29 million kilometers. So that's pretty close for a comet. And um, yeah, you will be able to see this comet when you live in the Southern Hemisphere or close to the equator. Uh, just after sunset, uh, look towards the west and this comet will steadily climb in the night sky during the month of July uh, with each passing day. And it will be located just a bit right uh, of the large constellation Hydra. 
So let's talk about the positions of the planets and let's start with Venus. Uh, Venus will appear as a morning star in the morning sky just before sunrise. Look towards the east where Venus will be located in the constellation Taurus. Uh, Mars will be visible as well. It will rise uh, in the east and it will travel towards the south when you are in the northern hemisphere. Uh, when you're in the southern hemisphere, Mars will also rise in the east but will travel towards the north in your night sky. Uh, similarly, Jupiter and Saturn will be visible almost the entire night. They will rise in the east uh, and move towards the south and the west during the night when you are located in the northern hemisphere. And of course, for the so southeast, uh, Jupiter and Saturn will rise uh, in the east, but then will travel towards the north and the west. Um, and super exciting stuff, of course, because Jupiter and Saturn are both at opposition in the month of July. Uh, for Jupiter, it will happen during the night of the 13th of July and Saturn will be in opposition during the 21st of July. So in op opposition actually just means that it will reach its closest distance uh, from Earth. So I just wanted to give you a couple of tips on how you really can nail your view or your picture of Saturn and uh, Jupiter in the month of July when these planets are at their closest opposition. So the first tip is really, really simple. If you are working with a reflector, be sure to collimate that reflector. Um, it's always good to do that, of course, but uh, yeah, you have only once a year when these planets are at their closest uh, distance from Earth. So be sure to collimate your telescope. Uh, the second tip I have is that you should actually wait uh, to view or especially also to capture Saturn and Jupiter until these planets reach their highest point in the night sky. When you are trying to capture those planets when they are low above the horizon, you will also pick up a lot of turbulence uh, that is always present uh, in our own atmosphere. So try to wait until these planets are a little bit higher so you will avoid that turbulence uh, that is close to the horizon. Um, as a third tip, and that's a pretty difficult one because I live in the city myself is try to avoid shooting from concrete so uh, you have maybe you're shooting from the street or a sidewalk uh, try to avoid that because uh, during the summer days uh, there's a lot of heat of course uh, and the the concrete it, it, it absorbs the, this heat during the day and it will radiate the heat during the night and when you are shooting from concrete then this uh, yeah this heat will actually create some more turbulence so you uh, you have a suboptimal picture or suboptimal view of the planets um, the same can be said for roofs by the way if you have the opportunity to avoid uh, buildings try to uh, yeah try to capture saturn and jupiter uh, without any building uh, being in front of your field of view. So let's talk about some awesome deep sky objects that you can image in the month of July. And let's start with the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, please keep in mind, I am a Northie. I will do my best. If I make a mistake, please put a comment in the comment section down below. So let's start with the Eta Carina Nebula. Pretty awesome nebula, by the way. Um, the, uh, it will be visible in the southwest uh, just after sunset and it will move closer to the south horizon during the night. And I also noticed that close to the Eta Carina Nebula you have something like the Running Chicken Nebula. It's also a pretty big uh, nebula to capture, really awesome. We have the, the Running Man Nebula in the north uh, in the constellation Orion in wintertime, but you have the Running Chicken Nebula. So, huh? um, if we look at the small and large Magellanic Clouds, so they are close to the horizon in the southern evening sky, but during the night they will rise uh, in the south southeast. So um, yeah, it makes a little bit of a U-turn and it will rise during the night. And uh, yeah, the brightest parts of our Milky Way are of course still also visible in the southern hemisphere. So just look towards the northeast and then during the night uh, the Milky Way will travel towards the north northwest. And uh, yeah, within those brightest parts of the Milky Way, we have some awesome nebulae uh, which you can, uh, can image. So for instance, you can image the Lagoon Nebula, the Eagle Nebula, the Trivet Nebula, and the Sagittarius Star Cloud. They are all located within this bright part of the Milky Way. So for us living in the Northern Hemisphere, of course we can image that bright part of the Milky Way as well. But for us, the Milky Way will rise in the Southeast and then will travel towards the South-Southwest during the night. And of course we can then 
uh, image the same kind of beautiful nebulae I just mentioned. So the Lagoon Nebula, the Eagle Nebula, the Trifid Nebula and also the Sagittarius Star Cloud. They are all located within this bright core of the Milky Way. Pretty awesome. And of course the second popular region um, in the Northern Hemisphere is of course the constellation Cygnus which will uh, be uh, rising in the east towards the south. It will be high up in the sky and you can of course then image some flagship nebula such as the uh, North American Nebula, the Pelican Nebula, the Crescent Nebula and uh, the Cygnus Loop. All very awesome targets to, to capture. Um, and of course a little bit east from Cygnus you will also have uh, access to the Elephant Trunk Nebula and the Wizard Nebula. So both nebulae, pretty awesome nebulae, check them out. And uh, yeah, last but not least I would say uh, the month of July is then the perfect opportunity also to engage in what is called wide field astrophotography. So if you want to make a wide, wide field picture of the Milky Way, uh, try to do that because uh, yeah we have now these, this, this beautiful beautiful view of the brightest uh, parts of our Milky Way. So try to capture that. Maybe you can make a beautiful time lapse uh, of the Milky Way like passing uh, your field of view. Um, if you uh, have access to a DSLR, maybe a wide field setup, uh, please check that out. So last but certainly not least, let's talk about hashtag NSSFO. I saw that you shared a lot of your hard work, a lot of your pictures with me using the hashtag NSSFO. And uh, yeah, I really, really am inspired to see that all of you are like contributing to this beautiful wall of astrophotography pictures. Thank you so much for doing so. Thank you for your hard work. And I hope you will continue to, uh, to share your pictures using this hashtag because it's also motivating yeah, me and hopefully also other astrophotographers to engage in our wonderful hobby. So I just wanted to show you five pictures that especially moved me. If you want to see all of the pictures, just type in hashtag NSSFO as a search term on Instagram. So the first one uh, is Ethan W. He lives in Singapore, uh, according to Instagram at least. And wow! Oh, he made this beautiful narrow band picture of the Keyhole Nebula. Uh, the Keyhole Nebula can be imaged from the Southern Hemisphere and it's close to the Eta Carina Nebula. And you can see here, this is a beautiful 15 hour integrated picture of this nebula. And um, yeah, let's see, he used uh, yeah, a William Optics Zenith Star 61. And uh, actually you can then see that only with a small refractor you can already make wonderful deep sky pictures. So um, uh, thank you very much Ethan and congratulations uh, with this picture. Thank you so much for sharing it uh, with us. Um, let's move on to, yeah, and again I, uh, I am mentioning Advaitim. Uh, for the second time here because uh, yeah, as you probably remember in June I talked about the uh, solar eclipse that was visible in parts of Africa, the Middle East and also Asia. And uh, yeah, Advaitim living in Mumbai, he was uh, able to capture this beautiful composition where you can see yeah, it was close to uh, a solar eclipse. Um, I think he lived a little bit away from the path of totality but still uh, you can clearly see here the sun of the moon uh, moving in front of the sun and then uh, moving away again uh, from Mumbai. Really, really great uh, composition, uh, Advaiti. Team. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. I really like also, yeah, it's like an accurate picture. It happened last month. So thanks uh, for sharing that with us. Um, then we have here Manolis Pit if I'm correct, a bit. <laughs> and um, yeah, I just wanted to show you that uh, just using a regular DSLR right now is enough to make a beautiful picture of the Milky Way. Uh, he's from Greece, he lives on Chios. And uh, yeah, you can see, let's see here, uh, it's just uh, uh, 50 second pictures, uh, 32 pictures uh, stacked of 50 seconds at ISO 1600. And I guess, yeah, he used the Sky Watcher Star Adventurer to track the stars. Uh, together with uh, a Nikon D3400 uh, yeah, and uh, his Nikkor 18-55mm to lens. So beautiful wide field picture of the Milky Way. Uh, try to do that as well in the month of July, you will be amazed. Um, then we have here Gregory 9020 and actually I still get a lot of, or a lot of, I still get a recent amount of 
uh, galaxies because yeah we had galaxy season in what was it March and April of this year of course and now still people are processing their pictures and uh, yeah Gregory has made a beautiful picture here of the pinwheel galaxy so the equipment he used was the Skywatcher 250 PDS so a reflector telescope on his neck 6 pro a really decent uh, mount here um, and he used his Canon 700D um, yeah, really great uh, with the IDES D2 filter. Um, so that's a great light pollution filter if you live in urban or city areas uh, where you want to block out some of the light pollution that is in your area. So pretty, uh, yeah, awesome picture. Uh, thanks for sharing that with us, Gregory. And then finally, last but certainly not least, Reisaki. Reisaki, you have shared a wonderful picture with us um, where you can see here a wide field picture of the North America and the Pelican Nebula. I also always like these wide field pictures. I, I really am thinking about getting a wide field scope uh, myself. We're at the end of the video. I hope you like this, uh, this update, this July night sky update. If you did, please consider to give this video a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to my channel and I hope to see you again in one of my other videos and until then i want to wish you clear skies bye bye